Hi everyone. We will continue with nitrogen metabolism. We will discuss few more questions related to this chapter. And I hope this is uh, for sure clearing your concept and building you and making you more confident to solve what kind of questions you can expect from this chapter. Right. So let's begin. First question is how does aerobic nitrogen fixing bacteria protect nitrogenase activity so first we all know that nitrogenase is an enzyme which helps in nitrogen fixation and this enzyme is very sensitive to oxygen and these aerobic bacteria can live only in presence of oxygen so how this aerobic bacteria protect this enzyme activity. So for example of aerobic bacteria, say for example azotobacter. For example azotobacter, what these kind of bacteria do, they shows very high rate of respiration. As a result of which they maintain reduced oxygen concentration. They maintain reduced oxygen concentration. So because of high rate of respiration, they maintain reduced oxygen concentration. So this reduced oxygen concentration is the main requirement for the nitrogenase activity. Okay, next there are some other bacteria. So other bacteria like for example gliotheci. What do they do? These gliotheci they have evolved in such a beautiful way that they fix nitrogen. Sorry, they fix. I'm very sorry. They evolve oxygen during the day by the process of photosynthesis. And during the night time, they fix nitrogen. And during night time, they fix nitrogen. So see how nature have evolved these organisms that they uh, evolve oxygen during the day photosynthetically and they fix nitrogen during the night time. So I hope it is understandable. Next question is, what is ammonification? So ammonification means what? Formation of ammonia. So how ammonia is formed? So organic nitrogen is converted to ammonia. Organic nitrogen is converted to ammonia by variety of processes. What are they? So here some biological, uh, here biological process is involved and this biological process involves the microorganisms. For example, which organisms? For example, fungi. Okay, so organic nitrogen is converted to ammonia by the action of microorganisms which includes the fungi also and this process is known as ammonification. Okay, so what is this process if you remember? Where microorganisms are involved to break down the complex substance into simpler substance, you remember the process? We have studied when we were very small right this is our basic knowledge this is a decomposition process in which the complex substances is broken down to simpler substance the same happens in ammonification where organic nitrogen is broken down to ammonia by the help of microorganisms which includes fungi also next is what is nitrification like what is ammonification is of ammonification is formation of ammonia Nitrification is formation of nitrate. Okay, so there are some bacteria which do this process. So example of bacteria we will discuss. What happens here is that ammonia 
is oxidized to nitrite which in turn is further oxidized to nitrate okay ammonia is oxidized to nitrite nitrite is oxidized to nitrate okay by there are some members here some bacteria will act and here some bacteria will act okay in the first case the bacteria which act is nitrosomonas and nitrococcus either of them can help in the process and in the second case the bacteria which act is nitrobacter in the both the steps oxidation is occurring okay so what is nitrification nitrification is a formation of nitrate from ammonia okay ammonia is converted to nitrite by the action of bacteria nitrosomonas or nitrococcus and nitrite is further oxidized to nitrate by the action of the bacteria nitrobacter understood and this process the name of the process is what the name of the process is nitrification in the previous case what was the name of the process it was ammonification clear next is what are chemoautotrophs so these chemoautotrophs they are bacteria which obtain their energy by oxidizing inorganic substances okay so i write here so these chemoautotrophs they are bacteria and what do this bacteria do these are bacteria which obtain their energy by oxidizing inorganic substances what are these inorganic substances can you tell me few examples such as ammonia or nitrate and what do they do with this energy to convert what they convert every time when you ask question to yourself no you will uh, curiosity will arise in your mind and you will remember the answer after that okay after that when you will listen to the answer that answer will be there in your mind okay so to convert carbon dioxide to organic carbon what are photoautotrophs these photoautotrophs they obtain their energy from sunlight but these chemoautotrophs they obtain their energy by oxidizing inorganic substances clear can you tell me few examples of those examples were discussed in the last question itself what is that nitrosomonas what do nitrosomonas do they convert ammonia to nitrite in lot of exams this question comes where they ask you about the bacteria involved okay ammonium to nitrite is nitrosomonas and nitrite to nitrate is nitrobacter clear next question is what is denitrification so nitrification was formation of nitrate and what is denitrification this is a reverse process okay so here what happens it will start with nitrate so either nitrate or nitrite they will be converted to the gases which is nitrous oxide and then molecular nitrogen this molecular nitrogen will be lost to atmosphere okay and this process is carried out again by few bacteria what are the name of those bacteria example thiobacillus 
pseudomonas. So please remember in most of the exams you will find out that which are denitrifying bacteria. Okay, so thiobacillus, pseudomonas, these all are bacteria which convert nitrate or nitrite to gaseous nitrogen. This gaseous nitrogen will be lost to the atmosphere. Next question is what is microsymbiont? Now we know that the plant, leguminous plant, they form a symbiotic association with what? They form the symbiotic association with the rhizobium bacteria. And what is microsymbiont? Whenever the other partner is a microbe, it is microsymbiont. As simple as that. Okay? So, in symbiotic association, The plant is what? The plant is identified as host and the microbial partner. In a better way, I should write it this way. Just a moment. The symbiotic association between I am writing between short form, abbreviated form and the microbial partner is called microsymbiont. So did you get me? I said when the, uh, when between the symbiotic association between the plant and the other partner is a microbe, then this association is known as Microsymbiont. So, can you tell me uh, the example of some microsymbiont? Example of a few microbes which are involved in symbiotic association with plant. These are rhizobium, brady rhizobium. So, we have already discussed about all these, right? Our next question is homocerine. So, what is homocerine? Now, uh, this symbiotic association, okay, to form the symbiotic association, the legume plants release some kind of chemicals to attract the bacteria towards themselves. Okay, if I draw a picture, so these are Say for example, a uh, host plant, leguminous plant, they will release some kind of chemicals to attract the bacteria towards them. Okay, this bacteria in need will also be very small. Okay, so pea plants, which is a leguminous plant, Leguminous plant are the pulses family of plants. They release a kind of unusual amino acid. Named homocerine. Okay. Called homocerine. And what is this homocerine? It is a favorable source of carbon and nitrogen for P root symbiont. Okay, this homocerine, it is a favorable source of carbon and nitrogen for P root symbiont. Okay, what is the name of P root symbiont? It's rhizobium leguminoserum. Okay, so here these chemicals which are released by leguminous plants, these are isoflavonoids which helps in the attraction of the bacteria. 
towards itself towards a, it towards the root of the plant but what are hemocerines these homocerines are amino acids which are released by pea plant and these homocerines they are the favorable source of carbon and nitrogen for pea root symbiont what is the pea root symbiont it is rhizobium leguminoserum so is that clear i said this is a amino acid which has which is rich in carbon and nitrogen and this is a favorable nutrish nutritive source for the rhizobium okay it is released by the pea plants next is next question is what are nodules so whenever these leguminous plant when they are in symbiotic association with the bacteria they form a nodule okay they form a nodule on their roots and inside these nodules the bacteria inhabit okay these inside this nodule they are they become pink in color and inside these nodules the bacteria is inhabit and these bacteria help in fixing the nitrogen inside these nodules okay so these nodules they are pink in color because of the presence of leg hemoglobin pigment in them okay this leg hemoglobin pigment they help in reducing the oxygen concentration in these nodules okay so these nodules are the regions where the bacteria fix the nitrogen okay so i write that these nodules are specialized structures where are they present where are they present yes tell me of plant roots containing symbiotic nitrogen fixing prokaryotes okay so this is a region where the nitrogen is fixed by the prokaryotes for example rhizobium so that's it for today we will see you in the next class thank you